In this session, we will see how a classic seismic recorder works and what are its main modules. We will also see what is multiplexing and demultiplexing of seismic data. The seismic recorder picks seismic signals, that is vibrations, from geophone sensors and records them on magnetic media in a digital format. It consists of multiple channels, each connected to a geophone group. Its working is similar to an audio tape recorder, which picks audio signals from microphone and records them on a magnetic tape. If we compare analog with digital recording, Analog is continuous recording, here the signal quality may deteriorate with time and any local error on the tape will create a local glitch, but rest of the data would be readable. On the other hand, the digital involves discrete recording, the signal quality is always maintained. If there is a single error on a byte location, the complete record would be unusable. Geophone is a seismic sensor. It is a transducer which transforms mechanical energy, that is seismic vibration, into electrical energy. It consists of a moving coil and a stationary magnet. The movement of the coil, due to vibration, creates electromagnetic flux, proportional to the magnitude of vibration. The main modules of seismic recorder are preamplifier, various type of filters, amplifier, multiplexer, analog to digital converter, formator, and finally tape cartridge or DVD writer. Now let's take a look at the working of a seismic recorder. The geophone picks weak seismic signals. The preamplifier amplifies them. Then we have the low cut filter with a cutoff frequency of 8 or 10 Hz. It suppresses the ground roll and air waves. Then we have the notch filter, which removes power lines induction at 50 or 60 Hertz. And finally, we have anti-aliasing filter, usually set to half of the Nyquist frequency. Once the data has been filtered, it is further amplified. And then we have multiplexer, which is an electronic switch. It one by one connects each seismic channel to the analog to digital converter for digital conversion. After conversion into digital form, the data is formatted in some seismic format and finally written on the media. Here we had shown a single seismic channel but practically a seismic recorder consists of a number of channels. Here we can see that the multiplexer switches one by one each seismic channel to the analog to digital converter for conversion into a digital form. We will now see what is multiplexing. For simplicity we consider a seismic recorder of only four channels. The geophones are connected to their respective filter and amplifier which are shown by the box which in turn are connected to the multiplexer. These are the four traces which will be digitized. We label them A, B, C, D. The time moves from right to left for each trace. That is each trace starts at right and ends towards the left. Now as we can see, the multiplexer has connected the first channel to the analog to digital converter. Now the first sample of trace A is A1 and it is digitized and saved onto the media. Then the multiplexer connects to the second channel and the first sample B1 of trace B is digitized. In this way, the multiplexer connects to the third channel and the first sample C1 of trace C is digitized. And finally, the multiplexer connects 
to the fourth channel and the first sample T1 of trace T is recorded. Now once the first samples of all the traces have been recorded, a scan code is saved. It is a unique code which separates one time slice from the other. Now the multiplexer switches back to channel 1 and the second sample A2 of trace A is recorded. This is followed by second samples B2, C2 and D2 of the rest of the traces. Again scan code is saved and this process is repeated. In this way the seismic data is recorded in multiplexed form. In this case the number of channels is 4, the sampling rate is 2 milliseconds, therefore the sampling frequency is 500 Hz. Now the skew rate is sampling rate divided by number of channels which is 0.5 milliseconds. It is the time available for digitizing a sample from a single trace. Since the sampling rate is 2 milliseconds, so within this interval the seismic recorder has to switch each of the channels to get their samples. Now we will see how the multiplex data can be demultiplexed. These were the four traces A, B, C, D which were recorded. We can represent the digital data of these traces by this two-dimensional matrix. Now this is the multiplex data. So we will sequentially take out the samples of each trace. So here is A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, A8 and A9. So here we sequentially assemble the samples of trace A that is from A1 to A9. This is followed by assembling of sample B1 to B9 of trace B. Similarly, trace C is assembled and then trace D is assembled. Now this is the multiplex data and as we can see it represents the rows of the matrix which are basically the time slices. On the other hand, the demultiplex data represents the columns of the matrix which represent individual seismic traces. It may be noted that multiplexing was part of initial classic seismic recorders when analog to digital converter and memory were very costly and therefore a single analog to digital converter was incorporated in the recorder and a multiplexer switch used to connect each channel to the analog to digital converter. Modern seismic recorders have analog to digital converters for each seismic channel and therefore no multiplexing is required and data is directly stored in trace sequential form.